got double, devil in trouble. Better stay home or can't die from the struggle. In this land here, we possess double. Elevated to a different league, got doubles, coming from different streams. You know what I mean, got Jesus by me, on a different league, yeah. We got double on, double on, double. Double pushing, double pushing for me. Double pushing.
Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seats for a few minutes. You're welcome to your father's house, to the house of prayer. Our hymn this evening is There is a Redeemer. And at the last verse, we'll all rise on our feet.
begin to bless him, bless Jesus, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. He, re- he deserves the glory, to him be the honor, to him be wisdom, to him be the praise. Somebody lift up your voice and bless him this evening. He is the Lamb that was slain for the your voice um, unto Jesus and give him praise um, for he is worthy of our praise. Uh, he is the one uh, who is worthy to open the scroll. Uh, he is the one that has made a way for you uh, into the most holy place. Uh, somebody give him praise uh, whose blood sits on the mercy seat uh, for you. vision for us oh Lord we have come to say we love you we have come to worship you receive the sacrifice of our praise this evening we give you praise in the name of Jesus we pray with thanksgiving somebody give him a loud clap of praise 
We're just going to go around and welcome each other. We are just going to say welcome. Welcome to the house of prayer. So turn to your neighbor. Welcome them. Go around. Welcome them. Welcome them. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over take your seat and for those of you who are online you are welcome let us receive our announcement join the women of virtue august 14th to the 17th for our special anniversary celebration register today with your local branch office. and don't forget to order your limited edition track suit for more information call us at one 888-263-4272. Hey Connect, we recently put out some questions to gather some research into how you guys think and how much you really know about Anita. So let's talk community engagement. Based on our research, we found that you guys think it needed to be a nonprofit organization, a charity that helps women, children, families around the world. And you're totally right. But there's a huge part of this organization that's called community engagement. So what does that really entail? No problem. Let me break it down for you. Anita runs initiatives and programs in five countries, being the Philippines, Ghana, Liberia, Jamaica, and Canada. Each country having a specific community need in our areas of education, health, and sustainable income. But a big question that you might ask is, how do you understand or figure out what the specific community need is? And that's a great question. What we do is we work on the grounds and do community engagement, which means we're literally engaging with the community by doing interviews or just speaking with community members, council members, people from the education system like principals, or going to the individual schools and interacting with the children and the families to get an authentic one-on-one -on -one perspective of what their need is. And this is where we come in. Let's use the Philippines for an example. Their specific community need is to raise funds for their clean water and an initiative to build a well for the entire community. While as in Ghana, Liberia, Jamaica, Canada, the need is different. And this is where programs and initiatives come in so that we can continue to engage with the community to get a bigger perspective of what the need is. Because the more research we have, the better understanding we have. 
The concept of community engagement might seem super complex, but it's really as simple as us engaging with the community. That means we go to the grounds, we get a perspective, and we bring it to you so that you can see where your money is going and what you're funding. Because we know that transparency is what you're asking for, so that's what we're here to give to you. We hope that you can catch this vision and help us support the work that we're doing on the grounds because the more that we can help empower the leaders and engage with the community, the better the community will be. Now, with all this being said, I hope you have a better understanding of what we do at Anita, but this means that you have no reason to tell me that you don't know what community engagement is. Welcome to All Nations Full Gospel Church, Halifax, a branch of All Nations Full Gospel Churches International. Led by our senior pastors, Professor Samuel Donko and Dr. Rose Donko. Our resident pastors, Reverend Ebenezer and Pastor Tosin Asamani, and our entire leadership team are excited you could join us for today's service. Our mission is to create a spiritual family where everyone feels loved and accepted. To create a house of worship where everyone's talents, gifts and abilities are utilized. To create a house of prayer for all nations. To train leaders for the body of Christ. And to fulfill the Great Commission through church planting. Kids enjoy a fun learning experience in our children's church, Jesus and me. Our youth church, Any Good Life, provides our 13 to 19 year olds an amazing place to worship and serve God together on Saturdays. You are also invited throughout the week to join us for our prayer meetings, Bible study, small group gatherings, and our Sunday classic and contemporary worship service. For more information about our programs, events, personal ministry or counseling services, complete a connection card on your phone, at your seat, or visit our welcome booth. You can also stay updated by following us on our various social media platforms. 2024 is our year of double portion. Isaiah 61 verse 7 says, Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Get ready for double. Enjoy today's service and ministration. Praise God, church. Praise God, church. Well, on behalf of our senior pastors, Professor Samuel and Dr. Rose Donkor, and our resident pastors, Reverend Ebenezer and Pastor Tosin Asamani, it is an honor to welcome you all in-house and online to the house of prayer. Yes, and if you're joining us online, you are very, very welcome. We're glad you could be here with us today. Please give us a wave in the chat. Put something in the chat that we know that you're there with us. And if it's your first time joining us online, there's a connection card link in the chat section. Click it, fill it out, and we'll be able to reach out to you, get to know you, and help you get to know us as well. Great. So for our announcements today... This Friday, April 5th, we have our Oil of Joy. Yes, 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 yes. If you missed our Oil of Joy, let me hear you say, yeah, yeah. That's great, that's great. So this Friday, 9.30 p.m., April 5th, we'll be here in-house at 2010 Persons Call for our Oil of Joy because everything by prayer, nothing without prayer, Shabaya, great. And on Saturday... April 6th, our youth church, Any Good Life, will be meeting for their game day, Who Knows Best, David edition. Yes, 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 we'll be here at 4.30 p.m. And uh, please, come through if you have ages 13 to 19. Don't miss out. Do not miss out because truly, if you don't come, you'll be missing out. So yes, make it a point to be there. And uh, on Sunday, April 7th, we have our ministry workers meeting. Yes, so if you serve in-house, whether it's in the morning service or evening service, we'll be having our ministry workers meeting for our morning crew. Um, for our morning crew, we have, we'll be having our ministry workers meeting at 12.30 p.m. right after our morning service. And for our evening crew, we'll be having our uh, um, meeting, meeting at 4 p.m. right after the Bible seminar that will be going on. I'll just tell you about it in a few. But please, make it a point to come through if you serve in the house. And even if you don't serve and you want to learn more about it, please, this is your turn to learn about it. Come through, ask the questions. If you don't even know what we do here, come, find out what we do here. There's a lot of things 
to, we do here. And trust me, there is a place for you too. So please come through. And um, I heard that there will be refreshments as well. So you do not want to miss out. You do not want to miss out on this one. Great. And uh, this weekend as well, April 6th to April 7th, we have a Bible seminar that will be going on in-house here at 2010 Persons Cove. This is churches across Canada. We'll be meeting here in our building Saturday, April 6th and Sunday, April 7th for a Bible seminar Canada. On Saturday, April 6th, they'll be meeting at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And Sunday, they'll be meeting at 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. So please, you are all invited. Make it a point to come here. Let us come for this Bible seminar because you can't go wrong with studying the Bible. You know, you can never go wrong. The Word of God says that it is light. So come and you receive light. Amen? Amen. Great, great, great. Another thing coming up is uh, wedding bells, wedding bells, wedding bells. Yes, so our amazing Deacon, Deacon Joseph and Sister Vanita will be tying a knot before God and before his people, April 20th, we're all invited. Church ceremonies at 11 a.m. So please, start picking out your suits, your gowns. You know, come looking flashy, classy, looking good. You never know who you might meet here that day, but yes. Come and support our deacon and our sister, Vanita. And if there is any reason as to why these two should not be getting married, please do see pastor in his office. But after they tie the knot, please forever hold your peace yes and um april 28th 28th we have anida day coming up like we saw in the video anida is our all nations international development agency and uh we do a lot of things community work children sponsorship women development agencies we have a lot going on in anida and it is blessing a lot we're reaching the world. We're reaching many, many communities from across the world. So April 20th, we'll be here learning more about Anida 28th, 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 language barrier, 28th, 28th. <laughs> we'll be here supporting Anida, sowing into this ministry. And uh, you know, you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. We'll also get to learn more about it. If you're curious and the video was not enough information, at a-N-I-D-A, anida.org. I believe you'll find more information concerning um, the ministry. Yes, anida.org. You can search it up. You'll learn more about it and the different programs that they have going on. Um, yes, that is all I have for us today. We're going to receive Brother Kweku for our testimonies. Amen. 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 Are you excited? Yes. Oh, let me hear loudest glory. Amen. The Bible says you should give thanks always for all things at all times. Amen. Amen. So we are here to give thanks. If you have a testimony, you can please come to the side and share it. Okay, let's welcome Brother Nellum. Hello. Good evening, church. Hi. So I'd like to thank God for adding another year to my life. Wow. That's a blessing. And one thing that actually shocked me the most was the amount of blessings, the amount of prayers that came with it. It's like, it was so specific that like, I actually thought that these people were actually listening to my prayers and literally giving it to me as my birthday wish, but I'm grateful to God. And another thing is, this actually happened um, Thursday last week. I got a job. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. I got a job. So this job, I've been waiting for this job since last year. Around during the <laughs> around the November fast, the Daniel fast, it was something that was on my mind because I was sort of stuck in a position where like I had to ask my dad constantly for money and I didn't want to do that because part of the reason is he's on pension right now. He's not getting paid fully and I wouldn't like to stress him to the point where I'm like, hey, I need money for this, I need money for that because... The school fees are enough. The rent are enough. <laughs> and I didn't want to stress him, particularly in that area, because even got to a point where my mom noticed that I started delaying in how frequent I started asking the money, because there were times where I didn't actually want to ask him for the money, so I just tried to extend it, like, try to extend how far I can go without, you know, spending so much, and God being so faithful, I have a job now. So I like to thank God. Man, we thank God. Adding a new year to your life. 
and a new job. Amen. Let's welcome Sister Annette. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to really thank God for healing. So wow. for the past um, five to six weeks, um, my health was really bad. So I would get sick. I recovered two days later. I'm sick again. So I was getting like really bad chest pains and I was having trouble breathing as well. So I did go to the ER. They did like a couple of tests and they said, my heart is fine. Everything's normal, you know, and they prescribed some medication. I did, and I did take the medications, but nothing was working. But I'm glad to say that I received my complete healing Amen. over this Amen. weekend. So there's, yeah. And there's no residue of any chest pain, breathing difficulty, nothing. Yeah. So I just want to thank God for that. He's my Jehovah Rapha indeed. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Brother Echo. Good evening. Good evening. Please come closer. Okay, so I want to also thank God for healing. Wow. So the whole of last week, my right ear was hurting seriously. I couldn't even put my airports in my ear. And then on Friday, while Pastor was praying for healing, wow. instantly it just vanished. Wow. It just vanished. Amen. And so since then, I haven't felt any pain. And Amen. I just want to thank God. Amen. 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 He's still healing. Amen. Let's welcome Sister Anita. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, it's something along the lines of uh, Brother Echo. Um, on Friday, I was having this sharp pain, and I've dealt with ulcer um, a long time ago. And the healing process took a couple months to heal from ulcer. Mine was really bad that I had to take about like 20 pills a day for me to, <laughs> for me to heal from it. Um, and then that subsided, but then it came back again. I think it was because of um, like stress or school. It came back along, like it came back. And you know when you just get that feeling that you know that you're not feeling well? Like it's not that I went to go get tested, but it's like all the symptoms came back and everything, and I felt dizzy, and there was just so many symptoms, and on the fr in the Friday prayer, I was feeling the pain, and I prayed about it, and God healed me. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, and he said, he, he was like, it is finished, but then I, when Pastor was saying to say the testimonies, I wanted to be sure, so I waited like a couple of days, and then I see that there are no symptoms, so yeah. Wow, amen. That's a powerful testimony. Let's welcome Sister Sharon. Amen. Hello, church. Come closer. Um, Come closer. Oh. Uh, I just want to give God praise. Um, I was, you know, contemplating whether to give this testimony or not, but um, I just want to give God the glory. We're able, as the Sydney church, wow to meet for the first time on Sunday wow. uh, this past weekend. And we've been Amen. looking for a place for a long time because we're getting to the place where our numbers were, God was adding onto our numbers. Wow. And so being that it was Easter weekend, we we're looking for somewhere to worship and just come together. and. We usually meet at the campus, our CBU campus, and they, I think last minute they sent me an email that we can't meet because the school is shutting down for the holidays. And so it was, this was Monday, so Tuesday I'm just sitting there like, God, what do we do? Because, you know, everyone's expecting that we are meeting this weekend. And I think in that moment I was just, I don't know what is hopelessness, but I was just in a place of, oh, what do we do? Because finding a place in Sydney alone has become a challenge of its own. Um, and I remember just hearing God say, look again. And I went through the list of the places I had already reached out to before that had shut us down. And there was this one particular one that I never bothered to reach out to because they were kind of out of area that we wanted to meet in. And for some reason, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try. And I reached out and God being so good, the manager of that space um, was a pastor. Wow. And so I didn't have to talk much. I just had to say full gospel. <laughs> like, that's all I had to say. And he was like, okay, come down, let's have a meeting. And in the meeting, he was just basically like, we can use the space 
for free till wow. we're ready. Amen. <laughs> till we have figured out that that's where we want to be. And then we can uh, make an arrangement with him. And we're able to meet on Sunday. And, you know, the turnout was amazing. And just to see people come together to praise God and to, you know, give him, you know, you know all the praise and all the glory and celebrate his resurrection. Yeah. It was just so beautiful to see. And um, I just want to give God praise. Amen. You know, he made the way Amen. when our backs was literally against the wall. Amen. And so I want to give God praise. And I also want to thank God for senior pastor, the vision. Uh, just the fact that, you know, all nations can just spring up in a place like Sydney. I don't know if you guys have been to Sydney. Maybe you need to visit. But in a place like Sydney. And so I just want to give God thanks and also Amen. thank Pastor and Pastor wow. Tosin Amen. for the leadership and for helping us along the way. So thank you. Amen. That's a powerful testimony. Give God glory. Let's welcome Sister Honella. Hello. Hi. Um, first, I'll thank, I'd like to thank God for life and for another year added. Wow. Yeah. But this year is like special. Wow. So I feel like <laughs> I feel like um, a lot of times we tend to just go about our day and forget that we're living in something we once prayed for. So I, I tend to do that. I'm not going to lie. I tend to do that. But I just want to thank God that he has brought me how far I've come. And the fact that I'm still standing here with him, regardless of anything I go through. And I'd like to thank God that I finally got a job. Wow. Oh my God, I got a job. Amen. Um, it's something I prayed for for a long time. Wow. And I've been up and down looking for a job, but I finally got it. And I can say I'm living in my prayers right now. Wow. Everything is. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. That's a powerful testimony. We thank God for all the powerful testimony. Let's welcome Brother William for administration.
is good. Say, God is good. <laughs> no, I said, you have to respond. God is good all the time. He is also amazing. Wow. Praise. One more time. Say, God is good. God is good all the time. He is what? Also amazing. Praise, praise, praise. You know, I think it's a bit bright from what I've been noticing. I mean, what I mean. I'm shining. Am I not shining? We bless the Lord for this wonderful testimonies. Can we thank God for the testimonies of jobs? Your job is also coming. Just tell him as you are clapping, say thank you, Jesus. Your job is also coming. Just praise and bless him. And all of you, I know that you went through some tough times. You went through some tough times when you were waiting. May this prove that God is good to you. That when you are in another challenge, you will remember. Hallelujah. Just pray right now and say, Lord, thank you for testimonies that I can remember. Pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for these testimonies so I can remember in the days that are difficult that God is good. Hallelujah. I can hear you praying. Begin to pray. And say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you have come through for us. For jobs, you have come through for us. In healing, you have come through for us. For powerful miracles, healing, instant healing in the ears. Thank you, Lord. That will cause us to believe in you greater, in a deeper measure. When difficulties come, when we are looking for a place to meet, when we are looking for a space, Lord, may we remember, may we remember that you are a good God, and you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. Hallelujah for jobs, hallelujah for birthdays, hallelujah for healing of ulcers, healing of ears. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless his name. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank Thank you that you are good to us. You are so good to us. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise for safe traveling mercies, for journey mercies, for healings, for jobs. We give you praise for an awesome weekend that just passed by. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for change. Thank you for the hands that do it. It is the doing of the Lord and is blessed in our eyes. Give him praise. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for this place of worship. Hallelujah for his hands and his work. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give him praise for every testimony. Give him praise for every testimony. Give him praise for every testimony. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that this house rejoices. Amen. Songs of joy will always increase. They will always increase in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Songs of joy, they will always increase. They will always increase in the house of the Lord. Songs of joy, they will never depart, they will never depart from the house of the Lord. Songs of joy will increase. Songs of joy will always increase, will always increase in the house. Songs of joy will never decrease. Songs of joy will never decrease. They will always increase. Will always increase in the house of the Lord. The celebrations that have passed are nothing compared to the ones about to come. They will always increase. They will always increase. getting bigger. The healings are getting more powerful. Our joy is getting louder. Our songs are getting louder. We will never get, we are not going down. It's rising and rising and rising in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why we are glad when we say, let's go into the house of the Lord. They will always increase. They will always increase in the house of of 
praise they will never decrease but they will always increase in the house of the Lord healing testimonies they will never decrease they will always increase in the house of the Lord sounds of babies sounds of babies they will never decrease they will always increase in the house of the oh my god i got a job jobs will never decrease they will how it's supposed to be. Talk to your wife. I see. Since the past week, you have become more beautiful. Hallelujah. Who is it? <laughs> In the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to take your seat. I want to work. I want to remind you again. Maybe you've not started hearing the hype, but you want to, you're going to be excited. First of May, Wednesday, the church will be packed. Amen we have our senior pastor is coming through professor he's not coming to visit he's coming home hallelujah he's coming home hallelujah look at that he's coming home he's coming home this is his home this is his main seat hallelujah yes if you ask me this is uh, this is it yeah everything started here praise the lord so you can't miss it he's going to come around you know, blessing us on a wednesday he will be beaming live across the whole continent and everywhere because he's doing a powerful series. I don't know if you have followed that series. He's preaching the whole Bible. Yeah, story by story. Hey, you, can you do you, you, you Can you do it? He's <laughs> uh, going step by step through the Bible from Genesis all the way. It's a powerful series. If you have heard, if you have noticed, if you have watched one or two, you will notice very deep series. Why was the creation made? Why was this? He's teaching the whole Bible. So I don't know where he will be when he comes, but you have to be expecting. Hallelujah. It's going to be powerful. You know, everybody, people know their office all, and they know what to do, and they do it well. I'm asking you this month, say to the Lord, use me, Lord. But don't be just saying it. Be looking out for it. Hello? Because, you see, if you, have found, if you find what God wants you to do and you do it, you will explode. Oh. You will not be there asking for money every week. I tell you. <laughs> you God will explode. And I think we should learn from prophet, professors. Don't go. See, when you find what God says you do, you go all out. Then you go all out. All out. And then you become, that's what makes you great. That's what makes you great. If you go back and you ask, you ask, so what did you do to make your young know, people ask those questions during interviews? What made you great? It's just to know that God needs me, He wants to use me, and then you allow Him to use you. You'll be great. Stop asking too many questions. Stop trying to take pastor's position. 
You see, you to find what you can do and do it when you do more. Like there's no competition here. Oh. There is no competition here. There is like everyone will be used of God. Amen. Did you see Abba dancing last for uh, Saturday? So I didn't know that she could dance like that. I always wondered why she was in place, but now I know. Right. Use me. Like, did you see the weekend? Those who were acting were acting. Those who were playing were playing. Those who were smoking were smoking. Those who were doing the smoke. The, the smokers were smoking. The dancers were dancing. <laughs> oh, did, wasn't that amazing? The photographers were photographing. The children were ch- ch- taking care of children. And the actors were acting. You know, let me tell you something. If you allow God to use you, you you will be a part of a beautiful thing. Yeah, it will be so beautiful. And I pray that under my ministry, you you find it. I want you to desire it and want it because when I start, because this oh I didn't even tell you guys. I will rarely be preaching in April. Rarely, this is the only time I'll, I may preach. I'm telling you because we have guest speakers coming in. Homegrown guest speakers. Outside guest speakers are also coming in. I want to know if you're excited about some of these things. Say, use me, Lord. <laughs> it's going to be beautiful. 21st, I just got a, a response from Reverend David Edosa. Reverend David Edosa. He'll be here for a wedding. And I said, please, if you're around, we want to honor you. We want you to preach to us. He said, I'll be here. I'll preach in the morning. I'll preach in the evening. <laughs> I said, this morning, I mean, oh, and then first May is our climax. So you will see guest speakers preaching, speaking to us all through the season. Because everybody can be used. You know, God can use you. Hallelujah. God will use you. And it's all, the limelight is not even, it's too, the limelight, it's, it's crowded. It's crowded. There's so many places God wants to take you. And we want to praise God for that. Are you excited about this? Okay, so let me conclude my new creation, uh, new creation studies. I just want to end on this because you know, our month of sozo salvation, it ends with the resurrection of Jesus. You remember all these things. Are you remembering what I teach? Because I'm trying to follow my father, okay? I'm trying to follow my father. I'm trying to teach so that. It's in the in order, like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you come to church, you expect you know what to expect, that sort of thing. I won't come to shock you. I don't want to shock you too much. But when you come for miracle service, you should be shocked. But for Bible study, I don't want to shock you too much. I don't want to I want you to open your Bible. Is that okay? So we've been talking about the new creation studies and it's going very well. The new creation is Maybe let me, let me summarize like this. The whole idea of new creation, salvation, it comes from God. That, that principle is called the principle of, it's not a principle, but it's the, the, the doctrine of, of origination. Everything is of God. This whole show of salvation is from God. Second Corinthians 5 verse 18, all things are of God. So you didn't become a new creation because your family is rich and you can pay money. You know, everything that's, the whole idea of salvation, the whole package is God-centered. Like, it's God who gives it. Nobody ever works for it. Nobody ever, uh, you can't say, you, you, you can achieve it in any sense of the word. So it comes from God. And it was by his decree. See, God's decrees. He said, this is it. Man must be saved. Salvation. I didn't go into that one too deep because otherwise it's have thrown it would have thrown us off. We'll talk about predestination and all those type of things that confuse people. If you go online, people confuse people a lot. I've ever heard people say, those who be saved are already known. God has chosen them already. You've heard that before. Yeah, it's like, so what are we doing? What are we doing? When would you know that you are the one who was chosen? When you want to wait till that time, oh, that's not good religion. It's not safe. I can't put my hope in something like that. <laughs> At the end, I don't know if I've... I was one or I was one. I'm not sure. I, I don't really sure. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. So maybe we'll get an assignment. But the new creation is God's thing. He made. He's the one who saves you. 
somebody preached. We know somebody preached to you. You know you cannot be saved without the gospel. That was the first thing I mentioned to you. So it says the gospel is the power of God unto what? Salvation. The gospel. So you can break it. The gospel is the good news. What is the gospel? What is the gospel? What is the package of the gospel? What is the story? Is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Number one, right? According to the scriptures. Then he was buried. Okay? And then he rose again. According to the scriptures. This is the, this is the, this is the gospel story. So there's a lot of things in the Bible, but this is the gospel. This is what makes a person see. You can believe Moses. Moses did open the Red Sea. You can believe. But that's not what saves you. Are you understanding that part? What saves you is believing that, number one, Jesus died for my sin. According to the scriptures, he fulfilled God's, uh, God's uh, promises. Number two, he was buried. He actually died. He was buried. And if you want to identify him, you were also buried with him. And then he says, and number three, he says, he rose again on the third day. And senior pastors shared with us on Sunday that actually the resurrection is even more important than the dying. Otherwise, the whole thing is a waste because every, people die anyway. And I just came to understand that from last week, Sunday that I came to understand if Jesus just died and he didn't resurrect, people will be under cases because they have killed an innocent man. <laughs> so you've noticed that somebody's generation is scarce. Uh, you say, hey, this guy, he cannot do anything. No, no person can save them because when it's spilled on the floor of innocent blood, if innocent blood is spilled, what is it? He said, that's a curse. And the people said, let his blood be on us. We thank Jesus that he rose again to collect the blood from people and go and put it on the right place. Because if he left it on people, it would be a serious matter. Somebody as innocent as Jesus, even Abel, his blood was crying. Then Jesus is. <laughs> we thank God for that. But that's what you have to believe, the gospel. And the gospel is called in many ways in the Bible. Maybe one day I'll also do that. I, I started off saying it's the gospel of peace. Have you heard that before? The gospel of peace. So this story I've been telling you is a story of, it's good news of peace. Peace with God. It's peace with God. Peace between someone who, um, an enemy, uh, to, uh, someone who's supposed to be an enemy has now become a friend. Now that process of an enemy becoming a friend is what we call reconciliation. It happened where? In Jesus. So it's the gospel that brought it to pass. If Jesus didn't come and die, you can't be reconciled to God. And I also shared on Good Friday that the cross is a meeting place. God and man. Okay, so Jesus reconciled. Reconciliation happened. It's the gospel of peace. Now, if reconciliation happened, it means that you must pacify or placate the one who is offended. Okay, so it has to be completed. So it has to be completed by the blood being put on the mercy seat. The mercy seat is where we go and placate God. Do you understand? That's when we go and say, God, we have offended you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus died so that you will be reconciled with God. And he rose again to put that, to make that complete. That's the propitiation. You hear that? Propitiation is to, it's like putting blood on the mercy seat or to placate an offended party or an offended person. Propitiation. So it's a gospel, it's a good news. Jesus has provided what it takes for me to have peace with God. Praise God. Gospel of peace. Now, we have many other ways to call it. We call it the gospel of salvation. And that can be broken into many things. So we talk about the word redemption. Redemptor. Oh, redemptor. Redemptor is working in, in, in a big firm in Mississauga. I see you getting a nice job. Yeah, but go get a job, nice job in a place we don't have a church. So that you can start a church, okay? All right. All righty. <laughs> don't be in a hurry to just get a nice job. It will be good that you also start a church. You start a group of people for God. Say, use me, Lord. Okay, so my, my, and then we did that. So we did redemption. Redemption is really bought back, brought out. Restored to original, oh, bought by and ransom paid. Oh, you don't have this in your notes. You should write it on your chest. Make t-shirts with this. After this message, I need songs from this message. 
I need to hear songs coming from this message, new songs coming, new t-shirt designs coming from this message, new mugs, new shirts. You you not pay me money. You just do it and see how many people you would do. Just write righteous. I'm giving you ideas. You are listening to preaching, you are not getting ideas. Use me, Lord. Today we were praying. He said, open my eyes so I can see opportunity. If you know what will bring you your peace and your opening, your breakthrough, like you will take something serious. Listen to what I'm saying. You know, all of a sudden, I need to see dances from this message. I need to see, I need to see plays, movies, acting from this message. Hey, wait, wait, wait. It's a crossover message. This is how the thing of God works. So. Some of you understand what I'm saying. So those who design shirts, who are those who design shirts here? Shirt designers. You have to have this type of shirt. Righteous, sanctified on Tuesday. Wednesday, redeemed. <laughs> It'll be so nice. You'll be so online. You'll get more, more hits. When you finish, you bring your tithe. Okay? <laughs> now you understand why we bring tithes to church. Because we get ideas from the house of God. So, if we move from redeemed, so redeemed is ransom has been paid. He has been bought from the market. He uh, has been brought out of the market. Brought out of the market. Which is you have been brought out of the thing that was bothering you. You have been brought out. Hallelujah. And then finally you have been what? Restored to original use. If your father's shoe has been redeemed, you know what I mean. Your grandfather's shoe was redeemed. You know what that means. It means it was looking some way, but you've it has been returned to original use. I see us in Christ Jesus being returned to original form, original glory. Thank you. Je Jesus came to return us to original glory. Original. Hallelujah. It's the gospel of salvation. It's also the gospel of grace. It's the gospel of grace, which means that that's what even redeemed is part of it. So he, with his own substance, he purchased us. Something from himself, right? Then we talked about uh, what else? Class. No, that's recent. But after redeemed, didn't we talk about oh, we didn't do okay, so redeemed is slave to king or to son. Oh, we did that. We did uh, hmm. then we did guilty. When you are guilty, condemned. When you are guilty or condemned, how do you become uh, righteous? You are justified. Just as if you never sinned. But justification, like I told you, it's not, it's not like somebody pardoned you. Uh, that's a very legal term. You remember what I was sharing with you? It's like you're going to hit somebody's car. They can say, okay, go. They've forgiven you. They've pardoned you. But that's not what God did. Yes. God, as for God, he will not let the guilty go free. He's a merciful God, but the guilty cannot go free. That's why I'm so happy that Jesus resurrected. Because if we're guilty of killing an innocent man, we can't go free. You can't just go free like that. Somebody has to pay. So God paid so that he will be just. Because he can't cheat the system because he knows you. How many of you know somebody somewhere and they, they bent, they cheated the system for you? It's around this area. Yeah. Yeah, some of you got admission into schools. Uh, you got into some job interview. Your name came up to the top because they know someone who knows somebody. Have you ever wondered why only people who are doctors have children who are doctors? Yeah, it's whom you know. It's not that simple. It's not that simple. A lot of people who are doctors have somebody in their family who's a doctor. And a lot of farmers have people also in their family who are farmers. It's handed over like that. So you, you, if, so you check your history. You don't have anybody. They, you, ah, well, I say I need Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Because the whole situation is God cannot cheat the system. God will not cheat. Because if he cheats, that's his seat. We learned in Psalm 89, right? He said, his, the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. If God cheats the system... The Supreme Court of Heaven, of uh, the Supreme Court of the Universe, will judge God unjust. Because the, when the angels sent, bam, he didn't even show up. He said, "Michael, deal with them," <laughs> and he has sentenced them to eternal death in the lake of fire. He, it will never, he's not changing his mind. <laughs> then man will sin, and then he said, "When you sin, you will die." And then all of a sudden, he said, "No, no, no! I said it, but I've changed my mind." That's how some of us do it to our children. Say, I said I'll take you somewhere, but I won't take you. That's why you're not God. God is not a man that he will change his mind. He doesn't change his mind. So if he says you will die, you must die. Or 
the principle of imputation must be made. We talk about imputation, right? Legal term. So someone's, someone's a life for a life. A life for a life. Otherwise, that's not been paid. So Jesus paid the, 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 the life price. So that God will say, you are just, you are free, you are acquitted, you are not guilty. And no one can ask him any question. There was no bribe. I ended up paying for them. Hallelujah. So then, because of that, you are justified. And because you are justified, you can be called righteous. Now, so two terms come up. Oh, I need to rush and read my Bible. I have a few verses for you. Two terms come up when it comes to righteousness. We are the righteousness of God. In Christ, have you thought about it before? First, Second Corinthians five, verse uh, twenty-one. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. You've heard it before. Oh, okay, write some notes down. It's okay. Today I'm going to. Today I'm just going to tell you about the resurrected Jesus. Who is Jesus now? Because before we know, he was a guy who was on the earth. Who is Jesus now? It's so exciting. You'll be singing. That's why they were singing Jesus. I think they knew what I wanted to preach or something. That's so nice. Let God use you. Be serious. Be serious. Antonica, the Lord will use you. Oh, it's not, you think it's late? It's not late. Oh. It's not late for God. It's not late for God. Late. <laughs> it's not late for God at all. He will use you. Praise the Lord. Yield. Let all your stories and all your issues set you up for glory. All your issues, let them work together to make a story for Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the song he was singing to. Pastor, relax. Okay, so you might become the righteousness of God in Christ, in him. So what does that mean? The righteousness of God. You are the righteousness of God. What means that you are the proof that God is just. You understand? I am the proof that God is just. My salvation is proof that God is just. And he's justified in justifying me. I have become the proof that God is still righteous. Beautiful. Was, isn't that nice? Good. So nice. First Corinthians 1 and verse 30. He says, and Christ has become our righteousness. What does that one mean? So we are God's righteousness and Jesus Christ is our righteousness. We be, being God's righteousness that we are proof. We are the trophy of God's of God's justice. Yes, we are trophies. We are, we, we are proof that God is just. If you want to know that God is just and righteous, look at us. He has brought us out. He paid for us. And then, he is our righteousness. It means that your righteousness no longer depends on your conduct. Your righteousness is now a person. That's the exchange. It's a person. Jesus Christ has now become your righteousness. You're not being guilty. It's not based on what you have done. It's based on a person, Jesus. So until Jesus is guilty, you are not guilty. Did you get it? Until Jesus is guilty, found guilty of a crime. Some way, somehow, you can never, you can never be called uh, guilty. What does that do for you? It means that you can always confidently approach God. Because of Jesus. It doesn't matter if you just came from a fight. You just finished fighting. You were fighting. How many of you like fighting? Say not me. How about on, on, online, right? How many of you have got some fights online? Twitter fight. How many of you fight on Facebook fight? How many of you record rants? You record yourself ranting. How many of you fight with your status? You fight with your status. Your status. Your WhatsApp status. You, you, are, you are poking somebody by putting your status. Angelica, do you put that? Uh, hey, so all of you don't do any fight. Okay, well, let's just think that you just finish a fight. And then they say, we are about to pray. How many days of cleansing do you need? You don't need zero days of cleansing. Because your approach to God is not based on your righteousness. If it was based on your righteousness, we'll have a small problem. There'll be a problem because there'll be no day that's to be enough. Amen. So it goes both ways. For those who think they are very righteous and they come to God based on how good they've been this past week, they're always disappointed. I don't know why. The bad boys get more from God than the good girls. The bad boys who know that they were bad, they get more from God than goody-goody people. I don't know. I've always wondered why. 
Then I realized that goody goody people, they stand a chance of coming to God based on their goody. Yes. And I've heard people who say that. It's not the, like I've heard people who are angry at God. Like, have you heard somebody? Me, I can never be angry at God. Like, I, I, I'll be shocked. If I say I'm angry, I'll be shocked because the things I've done that are bad, eh, that I'm standing, I can, I can never. One day, say, ah, God didn't give me a car. Hey, God. But people who say, people get angry at God, it's because of self righteousness. Somebody will say, Oh, my friends were sleeping around. I never slept around. How come I'm not married? God doesn't owe you marriage. Oh. You know they owe you marriage. That's why the bystanders are getting told oh, you. They forget you. Say God owes you. God doesn't owe you anything. It is because of Jesus' righteousness that you can approach Him. So better take advantage of that and throw your 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 self righteousness aside and take Jesus' righteousness. Put it on. Use that one. And say, Lord, because of what Jesus has done, me too, I must marry. <laughs> Can you say it? Say it with me. Say, because of what Jesus has done. The single people. Say, because of what Jesus has done for me. I confidently come to you, God. I also want a ring. Say it. Say, I want a ring on my finger. Not because of any good I have done. Because of Jesus' righteousness. Because of Jesus. Are you getting it? Yes. You can ask for things. Because of that. As for your righteousness and the one you're, you're living and things, it puts a conscience problem on you. If you're always sinning and sinning, you see that even you, when I see you, your head is down, right? True or false? Yes. But he has made provision for that. That's what I, I, I think I missed this one. It's called remission. Cleansing. All comes by the blood. So a sinner is dirty. A sinner is dirty, right? And a sinner being dirty must be washed. Jesus' death also made provision for your washing. Hallelujah. To clean you up. You clean me up. You raise me up. Hey, Charlie, these songs are nice, who? Hey. Maybe you didn't clean you up. That's why you can't sing it. Like I, when, I, when I sing it, it's so beautiful. I'm like, he raised me up. He does me up. I even add more. Hey. You're just singing it and dancing. Then when they say, let's pray, then you don't want to come to God. When you do something wrong, you're running away from God. It means you don't understand what the new creation is. So that person, so he was a sinner. But he can't be a sinner anymore. He has become what we call... He has become saint. Yes, he's sanctified by blood. He's sanctified. So, I didn't want to do sanctification today, but because I'm wrapping up, let me do sanctification. So, we have sanctification that's instantaneous. So instantaneous. Instantaneous sanctification. Oh, say it after me. It's right. When you believe in Jesus, instantly you have been sanctified in a certain way. In a certain way. Do you understand? You have become God's item. So when we talk about sanctification, the first thing that comes to your mind is fornication. Anytime we say sanctify, holy. When we say holy, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Because you used to go to a church where they always say, if you're holy, they say stealing, killing, and always sex is inside. True or false? Yes. So once I say holy, you can never count yourself holy. <laughs> this side, this side. No, 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 this side, this side. <laughs> So it's very hard, but there's instantaneous uh, holiness. And you will find out that. So there are, for example, when we're learning on Sunday, there's a, there's a, uh, the, a, the clothing that Aaron wears. They, wear it, they call it holy garments. Holy garments. So what, where did the garment go and fornicate that it became holy after? So it's instantaneous. You see, when something belongs to God, when God takes ownership of something, he has instantly sanctified, he has set it apart. Do you understand? It's not common anymore. See, I'm not common anymore. So now, that knowledge of not being common is what makes you live a holy life. It's not the thing that you are doing that is making you holy. It's the knowledge that I've been set apart. Do you understand? Uh -huh. See, you didn't get it. That knowledge is the one that makes you live a, a certain type of life. I'm telling you, do you know the, the queen now? What's the name of the queen? The, the the king's wife. Oh, we don't know her, no. The one. 
Not the one who died. Oh, eh. no, no, the, one, the fine one that they've been talking about these days. Kate Lane. Kate, Kate. Not the other one who does podcasts. I'm talking about Kate. Yeah, yeah. Kate, Kate. The, the Kate one. You see, there's a way she dresses. Do you see the way she dresses? Have you ever seen her in a bikini online? Have you ever seen her in a bikini online? You seen her in a bikini online? You saw her? You saw her in a bikini online? In pictures? Before she became a royal? I, that's what I'm talking about. But these days, some girls can take bikini and do photo shoots right now. It's not like they are, I mean, I thought it was, was swimming, but they can stand and do, eh, we are going to the pool. I mean, it's like, you know, it's not like she doesn't swim. It's not like she doesn't swim. Yes, but you never see her in the swimming coat. <laughs> ah, you are scratching your head. You don't understand what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say the position, the, the being such a partner of her makes her do things in a certain way. And no, no, no. <laughs> that is the issue I'm talking about. But it's the knowledge. You see, if you don't think you are a royal, there's a way you act. Uh huh. Yes. So, but then, then there's also ongoing sanctification, which is if you walk in the light, as he's in the light. So, the word of God sanctifies you, it cleans you. There's a lot of debts. That's called renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. There's a lot of crap in your mind, in your heart. In your... So over time, the word of God also cleanses you and makes you. But as for the holy, you are holy because God called you. And God called. He has put his name on you immediately. You can say, I'm a, my name is saint. You don't need to die for anyone to make you a saint. So one day when I go do something bad, just say, mention your name with saint and try doing that bad thing. You will notice that... Mm. Yeah, when a boy is texting, you say, hello, you say, add my title, add my title. Hello, Saint Inkosi. It means the conversation is going to be saintly. It's a knowledge of your, your standing. You understand? So you are not for common use. That's why me, I tell people that. Me, the, the old way of dating, eh, it has lied to you. you. You kiss before you start a relationship. No, no, we, 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 forgive, forgive. Online, forgive. I have 25 minutes to talk about Jesus. <laughs> so can I just rush? <laughs> you see, and I want to disabuse your mind of that. It doesn't work like that. That's not how it is. Let your mind be renewed. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It starts with a decision. It's a decision first. It's a decision, a decision that has come from observation, prayer, and and. and and communication. That, that's the, a decision that comes. It's not, it, it can't start with feelings. It cannot. It has never ever started with feelings. For you to be correct, it has never started with feelings. Like you are in a place alone, quiet, watching Netflix. We don't know what to do. You touch me, I touch you. Like, like how can I end up in a good place? Like, when, why do you think that's the beginning, a foundation for a, 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 a long lasting relationship? See, your mind has to be changed. That's why God has to wash your mind. Too many movies. You need to work on things. Now, if you have slept, hallelujah. Hallel- say hallelujah. See, I'm a saint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still, God has washed me. But your mind too has to change. Because now you have come in, you still want to get, relation- you want to do relationship the same old way. You see, somebody has been talking to you for six months. Nobody in authority around you knows. Nobody knows. And you say you, are, you have discernment. You have discernment. You have a discernment. <laughs> you don't know what you are doing. <laughs> you have discernment. And the boys will say, I don't want anyone in my business. Your business, w- w- police will be your business. Police. <clears throat> as police come into your business before, like they knock on your door and they say there's a fight. If somebody has called us that there's a fight in this house. Have you not heard it on TV before? Some people are fighting, then some, some all you know person in some say, hey, they are fighting, let me call the police. That's when you know people are entering your business. Let people enter your business before. Hello? Okay, why am I talking about it? Because it's a process of sanctification. Our relationship must be sanctified. Our marriages, the way we talk, the way we do things. You have to yield. Walk in the light. Jesus will cleanse you. Walk in the light. Light is important though. If you want to have a saintly relationship, let it be in light. 
It's me, I didn't mean, I told me, I was very proud. I didn't have people t- telling me things. If, if somebody called me and told me, hey, I've been seeing you talking to this girl, what have you been doing with her? Like, I'll be straightening up. Ah, I thank God for pastors. That's what I mean, I'll call you and say, I've been seeing you sitting in that boy's car. What is going on? Because we are sanctified people. We are saintly people. We do things in light. Say light. So we kiss in church at the wedding. That's why we kiss. We don't die. You, when some people are kissing, you see your body scratching you. It's a problem for you because of, it's, it's not good for you. Like your mind, is, your mind, is, it's not correct. You can't handle it. It's like, e, e, e. They are kissing. It's in light. Anyway, so that's what Jesus has done for us. So there's instantaneous and then there is the continuous washing, the word. Otherwise, you will not produce the fruit of it. Do you get it? So you are no longer a sinner. You have been sanctified. You are no longer profane. You are no longer common. You are holy with the holiness of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you can sing that song. I am holy. I am righteous. And that is what will make you live a holy life. If you think you are going to do good to become holy, that price, it has already been paid. You don't need to work for it. Hallelujah. But then it's the Holy Spirit. The third, the third agent of sanctification. I give you two agents. The first one is that God has called you. The Father calls you. That's saved. Number two, it's the word, agent of sanctification. Renew your mind. The third agent of, is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in your life makes you holy. He teaches you. He helps you. The Holy Spirit is the third agent of sanctification. The fact that he has come to live inside of you has made you holy. And his work in your life will also make you live, produce holiness. Amen. It will affect the way you arrange your room. Yeah. Yes. It will affect the way you do things. All over the, all over the place. Everything is all over the place. The Holy Spirit will help us. Amen. Okay. So that comes to. So all this has been done by Jesus. And all this he did by going to the cross. He paid for it. Mostly all blood, his life, blood, all the exchange, blood, blood. So now that he has is done, when he was doing all this, he was doing this, number one, as your substitute, number two, as the lamb of God. John 1, 29. This is the lamb. Because all these things we are talking about, we needed someone to pay the ransom. We needed somebody to give the blood. We need all this we needed. And then it's usually in a lamb. If you look at the Old Testament types, it's a lamb. So that's what you use to get all these things for you to be okay with God, reconciliation. So we needed a lamb. How many of you understand what I'm saying? We needed a lamb. And we were donkeys, okay? We were colts. We needed a lamb to replace us, a clean animal. So he did all this as a lamb. Now that he has finished that part, guess what? We also need somebody to do something. And that's what Senior Pastor started teaching on. And I want to show you who Jesus is now. Who he is for you now. You know, it's okay to see him as a lamb, but when John went into heaven, he said, he said, the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. When he turned, he saw a lamb that looked like he was slain in Revelations. He said, he looked like the lamb was slain. So when he was slain, now... He has become something else. Let's look at what the Bible says about him. Let's look at what the Bible says about Jesus. Glory. Say glory. After he paid. This is all, it's all part of the good news. Though. Because I told you that he resurrected, right? It's all part of the good news. Who Jesus is for you now. Who is he now for you? Oh, I have 15 minutes. So we can rush. Look at this. Look at what they say about him. Revelations. Yes. Wow. That's it. From verse f- chapter 5. It says, Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp. Oh. No, no. Go to verse 6. Verse 6 says, And I looked. And, ah, we have to go back home. 
verse 4. It's not on your list, so don't worry about it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the, and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Say, do not weep. No. Say, do not weep. No. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has prevailed. He has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Who has prevailed? The lion. The lion. The lion. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. That's good. Okay, no, sorry. That's, it's a secret song. No problem. But <laughs> do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. He has prevailed. Now go to the next one. Six. Six. And I looked and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. The lamb. As though it had been slain. Finishing. Having seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent into all the earth. What did he see? He saw a lamb that looked like he was slain. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Out of which hand? The right hand. Out of the right hand. Now when, so this light needs to be changed. Eh? Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Okay. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain. Say you were slain. So his being slain obtained something for him. He's, he's not the same like that. He's, not, he's, he's the same, but he's not really the same like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came as a lamb. Now they are calling him the lion. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. You have done it. You used your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Keep going. And have made us kings and priests to our God. This is the gospel. And we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne. The living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. This is English major. They didn't have a word for million and trillion that time. That's why they called it thousands of thousands. Do you understand? I mean that plenty. Say plenty. Plenty. Good. Now, same with a loud voice. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive, read, ready to go, power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing and every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb forever and ever hallelujah now you can have a clue on where his position the position of Jesus now worthy is the lamb worthy of worship the same worship they were given to the one that they couldn't see so in Revelation, you see, they never described the one on the seat. It was, it was unapproachable. The only time they gave a figure to the one on the seat. In the midst of the throne, there was a lamb who looked like he was slain. And he says he's worthy to receive glory and power and honor. So Jesus had to present the greatest sacrifice and trade it to get man free from the fall and the separation from God. So all the nights of suffering and dying, he was using it to dissolve and solve the sin problem. He became a substitute for you, number one, to conquer the adversary, which is Satan, Jesus. This is the gospel. Like I said, he brought you from a slave market. To conquer the adversary, number two, to make the new birth possible, which means that the Holy Spirit can come because he, he can dwell in a man because sin is removed. If sin is dealt with, you can become new again. And then, and he also made righteousness possible or available, which means that you can approach God because he dealt with the sin. Very important. Now, who is he now? So when Jesus arose, number one thing we learned on Sunday is that he rose up as high priest of a new covenant. Say high priest. 
It's a high priest. Now, if you want to learn more about him as a high priest, if you read Hebrews, you see more. We don't have much time, but I think it's a very important thing to notice. So on Sunday, we read John 20, 17. I want you to notice something there. John 20, verse 17. When Jesus rose up, rose, he paused and met Mary Magdalene. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father and to my God and your God. Like I told you, Paul, uh, he says the mercy seat is like propitiation is making peace with an offended God. So he says, I'm going to God. This gives us a clue into what he was doing at that time. And senior pastor taught us that he was going to the heavenly tabernacle to pour his blood on the heavenly altar. Whether that's at the right hand of God or not, we don't know where it is, but it's heavenly. All right? Somebody asked me a question like, where exactly is it? But spiritual things are like that. There's a type, physical, but when it comes to the spiritual, it runs parallel. We don't know where he went, whether upside, but we know he entered the spirit realm to be able to placate God. God is spirit. You know that. Good. So, and then here he calls them brethren. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now Jesus says that, My brethren. Hey. This gives us another list of things that we can, you will notice when you are reading the Bible. A few things there. They call Jesus, number one, the firstborn over creation. The firstborn over creation or firstborn of creation. You can see that in Colossians 1 15. I send that to you too. Sorry. I need to go that way to come back this way. Yeah. Colossians 1 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Jesus. Now, what does it mean? It means that, especially the new creation. I want you to understand this. When you read Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Which means that, it says, out of him came the creation of God. Out of him came the creation of God. So he's the first. It's not like he was created. He was not created. But he's the firstborn. He's, the, he's over all creation. It is through him that a new race has come. He is our head. The new creation is our head. We're created in Christ Jesus. Yeah, it's very interesting, but... We have to take it like that. Amen. You were, Ephesians 2 verse 10. If you can, you see it. For we are his workmanship, created where? In Christ Jesus. We're created in him. So, and the Bible also says in John 1 verse 1, all things were created through him. Nothing was made that was made. He's the firstborn of creation. If he didn't show up, nothing would be made. In the beginning was the word. That's why he's the firstborn. The one that stepped out of God. Whoosh. The one that stepped out. The way that proceeded from God. It's out of it that all things were created. So that's the head. So it's called the firstborn of over all creation. Then if you go to verse 18 of Colossians 1, 18, it's also called another firstborn. Remember he said, I'm going, go and tell my brethren. You have become a brother of Jesus. This is the one I like. And he is the head. No, you don't really like this one. I mean, it's also nice. But he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead? Another position, firstborn from the dead. What does it mean? This one is a very simple, straightforward one. It means that he is the firstborn, the first one to come out of the dead. Amen. And I like it what it says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 29. It says, it's the same. As long as the head has come, the body will follow. You didn't catch it. When the head, if the head has come out, the body is following. How many of you have given birth before? Kelly is here. They all understand. Praise the Lord. You understand? When the head comes, the body will follow. How many of you have seen just a head walking around? That would be very strange, right? Your head goes, your body goes with your head. So he says, he is the head of the body, the church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Which means that all those in his body will also come out the same way. Hallelujah. You will also be resurrected if you are part of the body. Hallelujah. He's the firstborn. He's the first fruit from the dead. He said, after the first fruit, the rest will follow. Yes, he's the proof that you also come alive. Jesus is the resurrected one. The firstborn from the dead. Yes, I'm his brother. <laughs> How many of you call? Hello. Do you know Jesus is my brother? He's the firstborn from the dead. I'm also coming out of the dead. 
I also rise up. Amen. He went first, so you can come. Firstborn, brethren. Then the next one that you also notice when you are reading the Bible is firstborn of many brethren. That one is very relatable. Romans 8 verse 29. You have it? Yeah, I can't see you not. So Romans 8 verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Which this one, this firstborn is saying he's a prototype. Everybody will look like him. That's a goal. That's your goal. It's your firstborn. How many of you want to do what your big brother was doing? That's why when he went way world, he also went way world. True or false? How many of you have got a big brother, a big sibling? Oh, man. You always want to be like them. Until you realize that they're also human beings. True or false? When you grow up, you realize that, hey, <laughs> he was not that good, though. But Jesus is our firstborn. So that's it says, I'm going to tell my brethren. So these are names given to Jesus now. Firstborn, firstborn, firstborn of many brethren. Hallelujah. Firstborn of many brethren. He is my prototype. When he comes, I shall be like him. God is forming me, making me, Jesusizing you. That's the process God is taking you through. And because he came out of the dead, you also come out of the dead. And because in him, all creation, all things were made. He says, in him, you also, you have all things. Because everything was created through him. So if he's the first bro, then we are happy. Hallelujah. He's the heir of all living things. All things are his. It's all things are his. Actually, the Bible says, the father has handed all judgment to the son. Yeah. Yeah. He's the one, he's the judge now. Anyway, so now that he has risen and he's alive, the Bible calls him a few things, and I want you to learn it. Are you ready? Jesus died as a lamb, but he arose in, as Lord in mastery and dominion. Jesus died in weakness because of sins. In power and majesty, he rose again. You will notice a few things. He dealt with the sin problem. He met the justice issue, and he also vindicated. God was vindicated. I've told you all that. The righteousness of God. You've got all that. Now, when Jesus rose again, he enacted or what has begun is now the new covenant because he fulfilled the old, the requirements of the old covenant by his death. By his death, he fulfilled it. So he annulled it, the old covenant. And he began a new covenant in his blood. A new covenant with God. All right. Now, every covenant needs a priest. You see, you know, you know how many of you, let's say, think about this. If you were falling in a hole eh, and I, I stretch a rope to help you, you were saved by the rope, but is the rope your savior? Ah, is the rope the savior? Say it's the one who gave the rope. Uh -huh. So if the rope was just hanging there and there was no one holding the rope, you would not really have a savior like that. If the rope just fell into the water and you were able to hold it, you say, hey, rope, my savior. Nah. You were saved by them. So in the same way, the blood saved us. The blood paid for us. But there was a person that needed to do the saving. Do you understand? Yes. You need a person. So if Jesus died, you will not have any person to save you. <laughs> you see, there's blood, but there's no one to. That's why Senior Pastor was always teaching us that the resurrection is very important because we needed someone to do the saving. And you can't approach God. So you can't rent your uncle to do it. You can't say, uncle, go and take Jesus' blood and take it to God for me. Your uncle will, because even the high priest, even Aaron and the rest, they were shivering and shuddering and, 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 and shaking to go to God. Which means that you needed someone of a certain caliber to approach God on your behalf for salvation. Even though the blood has been spilled. Even though a new covenant has been done. So because of that position, he rose up as high priest. High priest to be able to approach God on our behalf. So Jesus is the high priest of the new covenant. The first old covenant, the priests, they all die. So if by mistake they don't give birth again, there will be no priest. But I like this new priest. I like this new priest. I like this new one. I like the new one. He has an endless life. Hallelujah. They, we don't need to go and do a substitute high priest. You know, in those times, if Aaron's children were not around, probably they would not take any sacrifice. But Jesus has arisen as high priest of a better covenant. Let's start reading some Bible verses as we close. The new covenant. A new covenant. 
And he has become high priest of a new covenant. I think we read one on, uh, on Sunday, right? I don't know if you remember it. So let's go to Hebrews 7, 18. Hebrews 7, 18. Let me see if I can give you one. Hebrews 7 will give you more thing about a high priest. Very beautiful. For on the one hand, there is an annulment of the former commandment because of its weaknesses and unprofitableness. Who can tell me the weakness of the old covenant? The weakness of the old covenant, the main weakness is it cannot make you righteous. Yeah, it just reveals your unrighteousness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of another, a better hope through which we draw near to God. And inasmuch as he was not made priest without an oath. Eesh. For they have become priests without an oath. Aaron and his people is by inheritance. But he with an oath by him who said to him, hey, Hebrews, the Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. Now, what he's trying to say is that people were not made priests by oaths. They were made priests by inheritance, by their lineage, if you are Levite. So sometimes there will be nobody. So it's not for like it's, it's, it's a, it, as long as there's a descendant of Aaron, then you're a priest. But then he says that this one, he was not a priest by inheritance. He's a priest by God's own oath, an oath from God. God Himself said, "You are a priest forever, forever. A priest forever. It means that he approaches God forever. Hey, holy one. Because I mean, I mean, I wonder if you want me to be going before God for you with my own holiness. I wonder." wonder because maybe this week I was not too good. Do you think I'll go? I won't go. I'll say if I go, I will die. So we have a priest forever. That's why we don't now we don't. So if you hear anybody saying you have to kill a goat, kill a lamb, kill a goat okay, because he's trying to be your priest. You understand? So there's a, there are people who still do animal sacrifices. The, me, my problem is not the animal sacrifice because we'll eat the animal. We'll use it for soup. My problem is you who think you can approach God for me. That's my problem. My issue is you. You think that you can approach God for me with good blood. Good blood. That's the problem. So get no, don't enter any court that tells you that. Are you listening to me? I mean, it doesn't happen here, but there are many of them back home. They still kill animals. They still kill goats. And they say that hey, it's not over. No. Jesus has become the high priest. You don't need any other person. Hallelujah. He's the high priest of the new covenant. And the new covenant is better than the old. Say high priest. So, as a high priest, his first work was to go and pour the blood on the mercy seat. And he is high priest forever of this covenant. Yes, you don't need any other high priest. He is your high priest. He makes intercession for us. So, from that, from that high priest, we move on to a few things that he has done. He is in the New Testament, in the New Covenant. Number one, he is called... A mediator. He has become the mediator of the new covenant. Mediator. You know what a mediator is? First Timothy 2 verse 5. There is one God and one mediator. The man Christ Jesus. There's one God. Yeah, look at it. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. So a mediator really just creates an avenue for two people to, to, to discuss their issues. A mutual ground. A mutual meeting ground for two. That's mediation. I've gone for mediation before. You want to know the story? I went for mediation. Have I told you the story before? You want to know, Emma, you want to know my story of mediation? I didn't pay my rent for about four months. I was not paying rent. But the place where I was staying, they couldn't kick me out like that. So they summoned me before a mediator. Yes. And then I was sitting on one side. The mediator was sitting. And then my landlord was also sitting opposite. Yeah. I owed rent. Many months. It's not like small months. Many. So I said, he said, what would you do about it? So the mediator, he doesn't say anything. He just said, yes, what's the issue? He said, you have not paid rent, blah, blah, blah. 15 days, you have to move. Then I said, I'll pay by inspiration. I said, I'll pay $300 every two weeks. I said something. I just said a number. <laughs> we need to be free. Hey. When I said it, then the mediator looked at the, the, lady, the other woman and said, are you okay with that? That's mediation. Do you get it? He has said you'll give it. Are you okay? 
Oh, say, yeah, 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 it's okay. We need to put it down. Then he puts, then I sign. The person signed. Then the mediator also signs. Yes, I saw. That's it. So, that's Jesus Christ has become a meeting place for God and men. Yes. He's a, he's a, somebody bringing their sin. He said, somebody brought their sin. Somebody brought their prostitution. Somebody brought their wickedness, all their troubles. Then they come and sit down. And then Jesus now has taken that place as mediator. And then looking at God's holiness, mm. then the person will say, ah, I don't have much to bring, but I'm relying on what Jesus has done. And then Jesus said, oh, yeah, 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 I did something nice. God, you, you, is it okay? God said, oh, why not? It is done. That's how you can come to God. You see, that's, how we, that's why he's the only way to God. Your problem that you have to say there are many ways to God because you don't understand that you need a mediator. <laughs> you don't just get up and go to God. That one, never forget it. You don't just get up and go to God. You go and say, there are many ways to God. Where did you go and do that research? There's, no, there's only one way to God. It's the way of either holy or you die. Believe it, I'm telling you. It's a holy God. It's called a consuming fire. Have you gone near fire before? Only a few things can happen when you go to fire. Only a few things can happen. Only a few. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Unless there's a pot or pan with water, that's your mediator. That's why the fire will not burn you because... If you put your hand on fire, it will roast it no matter who you are. You can't approach it with anything else. You need something between. And Jesus has become that. Hebrews 9 verse 12. Oh, time is gone always. Wednesday, the For there is no, Hebrews 9 12. Not with blood of goats and cows, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. So, we, we read that on Sunday. I wanted you to know this, mediator. So no one can come to God except through Jesus. In the same vein, he is also now savior. Savior. The one with the ability to save. The ability to save. Hebrews 7.25. So I'm giving you three words that you should take home. Hebrews 7.25. He says that, Therefore he is able, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. You get a whole, it's, it's still in line with the mediator, savior, and the next one I'll give you is intercessor. Like, it's the same mix. Like, anyone who comes to God must come to God through him. And anyone who comes to God through him, he is able to save. Yeah, he's able to save you. Jesus is the only one who is able to save a person. Yes, has he saved you? Has he saved you? Yes. He's the only one who can save. He's the savior of the world. Put it on a banner. Say, Jesus the savior of the world. He's the only one who can save. No one can save. No one has power to save. When he rose again, he solidified his position as the only savior. You know, like I told you, the rope is not hanging. Somebody pulled you out. He says, he's my savior. So Jesus is my savior. He's the only savior. How do we know? Hebrews, no, no. Acts 4 verse 12. When I say that, let, let me give you a quick assignment before I go. Okay, my time is up, so. My quick assignment is, anything I tell you that Jesus is, remember that in his name, you can have it. So, when I say Jesus is the mediator, it's not like you have to go to Jesus in any way. You just have to use his name for the thing. So, if I say, in the name of Jesus, God should forgive me and save me. What you're trying to say is that I'm invoking God, Jesus' position for my sake. Mountains are moving for my sake. Hey, for my sake. Do you get it? So, anytime I'm saying that Jesus is, you don't need to go and paint a picture of Jesus for him to be that for you. It's available to you in his name. Are you getting what I'm saying? I don't want you to bring another theory, go and look at, when you see a picture of Jesus, you're like, ah, Jesus, speak for me. He doesn't speak for you by his picture. He speaks for you by the authority in his name. So when you come to God in the name of Jesus, you have come to God as Jesus being your mediator. So if you are a sinner and you come in the name of Jesus, God will have to accept the mediation and say, okay, I accept you because of Jesus. Number two, if you want to be saved and you call the name of Jesus, it means that, Lord, I am lost. I need saving. When you call his name, he said there is salvation in his name. He is a savior. Acts 4 verse 12. Nor, there, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is how many names? How many? 
no other name. The reason why there's no other name is because there's no other man who has risen and become your savior except the man with this name. So when they shouted Jesus, many things were happening. People will, people will come to salvation. People will be saved from their trouble. And now saving has the word sozo. It means deliverance. It means completely healed. All this is in Jesus' name. He obtained that position. And that's who he is. When you, are, when you say Jesus, don't, don't, don't. It's not a footballer, Gabriel Jesus. It's not this one. We are talking about serious Jesus here. Of Nazareth. <laughs> Next one, quickly write it. So, ah, did you get a verse there? Yeah, Savior. No other name. No other name. You cannot be saved outside the name of Jesus. He is the only Savior. Then we have Jesus as an intercessor. Intercessor. Now, the difference between mediation and intercession is in mediation, the mediator is technically not part of the whole thing. But intercession is when someone is intervening on your behalf to help you. Are you getting it? Intercession is the person is actively intervening on your behalf to help you. So you are broke. You have no money. You have no wife. You have no lovers. You have no friends. And Jesus steps in to help you. Do you understand? To help you. Is that intercession? Someone intervening on behalf of someone who needs help. He's able intercession. That's a Romans 8, no, still you can keep Hebrews 7, 25. He lives to make intercession for you. So, now, it's also in the name. Check this. So, when you pray and say, Daddy, I need something in the name of Jesus. Who is asking? Who is asking? No, oh, you're afraid. Who is asking? Jesus is the one asking. And in, in John 11, 41, 42, Jesus said, I know, Father, that you always hear me. You always hear me. So as you are praying, Jesus is sitting at the right hand, interceding, interceding. means that he's, make, he's intervening on your behalf to help you. Oh, Daddy, I'm struggling with this permanent residence. I need help in Jesus' name. There's help available for you. Amen. See, intercession. He's an intercessor. Mediator meeting point, usually for salvation. But intercession that goes on, he will help you. I'm telling you, your marriage, if you're a husband and you're still, you want to love your wife better, oh, say in the name of Jesus, um, um, you will see that he will help you. How does he help you on earth? By the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we go to the line, this one, advocate. This one is a lawyer situation. Lawyer, say advocate. First John 2, 1 to 2. Oh, my time is up. Advocate, advocate, advocate. Let's end on advocate. I want to move on to another series. So, so, right? Advocate. You have advocate? My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is an advocate. Now, an advocate is not necessarily the one who is intervening to help you, he is the one who is now speaking on your behalf. So it does a different, a little bit of a difference between intercession and interve- intervening to help someone. And then this one is someone who's speaking on your behalf or who is speaking for your rights on your behalf. You see. So when you come, when you, you fall, you make a sin and you say, Lord, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Jesus will say, yeah, he needs to be forgiven on account of me. He's speaking on your behalf, legally fighting for your rights. Many rights. How many of you are activists, social activists? How many are social activists? Social activists. Jesus is the best activist. He's an advocate for you. Amen. So you have to notice that. And then, I think finally, let's read Hebrews 1. No, no, no. Read Hebrews 7, 21. He is the surety of the new covenant. Jesus is your assurance that whatever God has promised will come to you. Yes. If he did not spare his own son, Romans 8.32, but freely gave him up for us, how will he not along with him freely give us all things? He has become, he has sworn an oath. He's a high priest forever. Yeah, I've said it already. So Jesus is the surety that anything God has promised in the new covenant is coming. It's for you. Amen. He's alive to make, he's a testator. 
He's the one who signed the will. He died for it to happen and he's now alive to ensure it and to enforce it in the name of Jesus. So, if he did not spare his son, he means that he will give you all things. Remember that. You can read also in, uh, read also Hebrews 10, 1 to 3 when you go home. Yes. Did I say finally? Sorry, guys. Finally, finally. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> finally, finally. I, I, I can't miss this one. Jesus is no longer a lamb. He is now, he is Lord. Say, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Lord is master, boss. Boss. Jesus is Lord. Lord. And he's not a Lord that is going to push you around. He's like Lord Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. That type of Lord, yeah. Makes provision for you. He's your Lord. He's our Lord. Jesus is Lord over all. Lord. Colossians 2, 6 to 7. Colossians 2, 6 to 7. Write it. Write it down. As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him. Beautiful. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith as you have been taught. Abounding in it with thanksgiving. Walk in him. He is the Lord. The Lord. The Lord. He is Lord. Over every circumstance. Philippians 2. And he has been given a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. In heaven, on earth, and on the earth. He is Lord. So when we understand all this, then you understand what the name of Jesus will do. Do you get it? The wonderful name of Jesus. That's why when I tell sickness, get out in Jesus' name. He responds because Jesus is who? It's Lord. Lord. When I say, Lord, forgive me. Jesus' name. He is your advocate. Lord, I need a car. I need a car in Jesus' name. So say, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. He's intercessor. He's intercessor. And then we have the other one. Lord, save me. I'm a sinner. He's our mediator. So this Jesus is glorified. Hebrews 1 verse 3 and 6 to 6. And let's pray. Rise up to your feet. So Easter is about Jesus. Oh. It's not about eggs and bunnies. Amen. I hear in Africa they do now these pink bunnies and stuff. Oh, people are wannabes. Oh. It's my wannabes. I just said in Ghana there's the egg craft. Oh, we don't have many eggs. Okay, no problem. Who be? Now let's worship for a minute. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better. Is it beautiful to you? Do you see Jesus? He's so beautiful. Become so much better than angels. As he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. He's more beautiful. Lift your hands, worship Jesus. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Verse 6. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The four angels, the four creatures, all the angels, the thousands and thousands, they worshiped him. Worthy. Sing to him one more time. Worthy is the name. Worthy is the Lamb. Just spend two minutes. Sing to him. See the high priest of your new covenant. The throne. Your mediator. We crown you. We crown you now with me.
That's the new creation. That is your portion. Amen. I don't know if that's a song, but it was also nice. Praise the Lord. We sang it nicely, right? Yeah. Give God praise. Take your seat there. It's close. Now, this is your 20 minutes that you have given me. I'm really appreciative of it. That's why next week someone else will be talking to you. Amen. <laughs> so you'll be happy. I will be sitting. If I'm around, I'll be sitting. To preach and to teach. Wonderful. As part of your training, as part of your training. Amazing. Baby father, baby's father, Zoe Daddy. Wow. Zoe Makedes. I like the name. It's very good. Beautiful. Okay, let's give our offerings. Father, we thank you. We give because you have blessed us. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you are struggling with temptation, he is your intercessor. He will help you. Say, Jesus, help me. Say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. I'm 
falling. Jesus, help me. Help me. I become prayerless. Help me. Help me. You help me. Just call the name Jesus. You save you. Amen. Oh, nobody give offerings. Okay. Rise up and get bless. I don't know. I feel some way. I don't know whether I should be happy or not that I took your time, you know. Because you are not shouting, oh, why are we closing? You're not happy. It's like, oh, Pastor, you've done it, this wrong thing to us. Like you have done bad to us tonight. Oh, Charlie, I've poured my heart out. You are not excited. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. You are blessed. If for nothing at all, for this extra time that you stay, the Lord multiply to you because you have heard the word of God. Lord, let the last 20 minutes they had bear much fruit. Friday, we'll pray, okay? Oh, shit.